So at some point you may notice that this little meter turns yellow and that's because we had some clipping on this track and clipping is bad. Clipping is a word that we would use in the mixing world saying that the volume got too loud and you'll notice that the meter turns red sometimes and it also turned red over here on the master and I have a saying with all the students that I teach to keep it clean and green um, because you don't want to have any red showing up on any meter inside Ableton whether it's on an individual track, especially on the masters, um, or even these little meters here on the devices. You want to make sure that we have enough headroom, which just means there's enough volume between the loudest part and the quietest part of the mix. We'll talk more about mixing in other courses, um, but you just want to make sure your meters are clean and green and not being distorted. Otherwise, your mix will sound super fuzzy and bad, and it makes a sad day. Now maybe you don't necessarily want to have to draw in every MIDI note yourself. Uh, oftentimes I like to play them in real time. You'll notice up here in the top right corner of the screen there's this computer MIDI keyboard icon that's highlighted, which means you can use your computer keyboard on your laptop or your keyboard for a desktop to play the MIDI notes and play the piano. So I can go to Starbucks and take my laptop and produce music on the go, which is awesome. So as long as the track is armed here, when you arm the track, now you can have an input signal going into the track selected. So I can hit buttons on my computer MIDI keyboard right now, and you can make this happen. You'll notice that you want to hit Z to go an octave down and X um, to go up an octave. So let's delete this clip and start over. And now if I want to record in real time, when you have a track armed, then um, first of all, let me turn on my metronome so I can actually hear the rhythm. If I hit space bar, it's going to start playing Ableton's time. So now I can hear the rhythm playing. Um, you'll also notice the volume of the metronome is over here on the master. So sometimes it's super loud. You can turn the volume of the temp of the click up and down there. So now if I want to play something in real time, I'll just kind of launch the metronome so I can hear the rhythm. And then I'll start recording it by hitting one of these bubbles on one of the clip slots on a track and it'll start counting me in to start recording. I can choose the duration of the count in, how much time it gives me before it starts recording by right clicking on the metronome and you can see you can have a zero count in, one bar, two bar, four bars. I'm just gonna choose one bar for now and I'll select this. It'll give me four counts and then I'll start recording. And then I'll hit space bar to stop. If you hit stop within the right time, usually it'll adjust the bar to be in a perfect increment of two or four bars or wherever. So now I have the MIDI notes in here recorded. One awesome new update with Ableton Live 10 is what's called capture. And there's this little square box up here icon. And what that does is if you're ever messing around the studio and you're playing something that's MIDI um, and you end up um, playing something and you're like, that's super dope. I wish I was recording that. Now Ableton's actually recording using the capture feature in the background. And I believe it's up to three minutes. So anytime you're playing something, um, Ableton will actually recall the notes that were being played and will actually adjust your project tempo based on the average of the time that you were playing in that moment, which is really cool. So if I was to play out some notes randomly right now, let's see what happens. And now if I choose the capture feature, and it's kind of cool. So now it just captured your ideas in the background.